by the person who promotes local poetry, who has incredible poetry programs, who does incredible events like Flori Canto year over year. I'm really excited uh, about this program and it's called Native Tongues, Tres Poetas de Califas. A few things first from San, from San Francisco Public Library. Welcome to the unceded land of the Ohlone tribal people. We acknowledge the many Ramitish Ohlone tribal groups and families as the rightful stewards of the land on which we reside. The San Francisco Public Library encourages you to learn more about native culture and land rights. The library is committed to hosting events and providing educational resources available on topics such as land rights, Bay Area tribal community, and first person cultures. It's the right moment to also talk about Black Lives Matter and racial equity. San Francisco Public Library acknowledges the painful situation we're in as a country. Our library stands in solidarity with all who are working on collective action to end systemic racism and work towards equity in our country. As a library, we're here to help our community by providing useful and factual information and hosting wonderful people like these as well. Free COVID testing throughout San Francisco. Check that out if you need that. There are upcoming adult events such as this. This is one of the last ones in our Viva series, but we are happy to host these types of programs year round. Um, and right now, an afternoon of Viva Poetry with Alejandro Murguia, Leticia Hernandez Linares, and Jose Hector Cadena. I'll start by introducing these three incredible poets. Alejandro Murguia, author of Southern Front and This War Called Love, Nine Stories, City Lights, published by City Lights Books, winner of the American Book Award. In nonfiction, he's published The Medicine of Memory, a Mexican clan in California, University of Texas Press. <clears throat> he's a founding member and the first director of the Mission Cultural Center for Latino Arts. Currently, he's a professor of Latina Latino Studies at San Francisco State. In 2013, City Lights published his new book, Stray Poems. His short story, The Other Barrio, was recently released as a full-length feature filmed in the street of the Mission District, in the streets of the Mission District. He was the sixth San Francisco Poet Laureate and the first Latino to hold that position. You can connect with him on his website. Look him up. Great person. He'll get back to you and he'll do stuff like this for you. Actually, I don't want to promise that. <laughs> Next, we're also excited to have Leticia Hernandez Linares, who's a poet, interdisciplinary artist, and educator. She's the author of Mucha Muchacha, Too Much Girl, and co-editor of The Wandering Song, Central American Writing in the United States. Widely published, her work appears in other musics, Latinas, Struggles and Protests, Maestra Peace, Huisache, and Pilgrimage. A four-time San Francisco Arts Commission Individual Artist grantee, she teaches in the College of Ethnic Studies at San Francisco State University. Connect with her also via her website and also she's active on Twitter. Our third poet today, Jose Hector Cadena, is a poet, scholar, and collage artist who grew up along the San Isidro Tijuana borderlands. He is currently a doctoral candidate in the Department of American Studies at the University of Kansas. His work has appeared in Raices y Mas, an anthology of young border voices, Sipatli, Transfer Magazine, Pacific Review, La Bloga, Red Light Lit, and San Diego Poetry Annual. I'm really excited about today's program. I think we all need more poetry always, not just in this moment, but it's particularly important now it's particularly important for, for us as a community to, to promote these Latinx poets. And I'll turn this over to Jose. Jose, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, I just wanna thank all of you, um, uh, Anissa, Alejandro, for putting this and everybody else, Leticia and Alejandro, Murgui as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna start, I'm gonna start with a poem and we're gonna, um, alternate. So I will start with this poem called, There is a church in my memory that I go to. There is a church in my memory that I go to and I sing 
Cuánto he esperado este momento, cuánto he esperado que estuvieras aquí. Yo a tu lado he caminado, yo he sido tu mejor amigo. Sometimes I blink and I'm transported to the Parroquia Guadalupe del Rio in Tijuana, where I used to sing with the voice of an angel who has now left me. There I am, a fragile boy who bows to the cross, who helps his father carry speakers, microphones, tambourines, but I am only the ghost of a present as I float over a memory, an ember light and incense, glows of stained glass windows, I see burning candles, elders, probably goners by now, my father's face plastered with an imagined future for me, a face that cracked when I revealed I was not the saint of a son he wanted. Yo no soy nada, y del polvo nací, pero tú me amas, y moriste por mí. All is lost in echoes. All is lost. My voice is all messed up from smoking. And I wonder if I did this on purpose to eliminate any trace of that soft tonality that once adorned me. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I think you should do a couple more poems. <laughs> okay, so I thought we were going to go back and forth. So I, I guess I don't know what's going on. Ay, Dios mío. Jose, you changed the plan at the last minute, bruh. ¿Qué te pasa? Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> My bad. This is the, what happens in the Zoom world. Uh, here we go. This is a, a, a poem about Day of the Dead. I uh, hope you enjoyed this part. Dos días al año llegan. Dos y días al año llegan los ritmos de ascencio que se arriman con cariño y sé que algún wet feeling will hold me by my back. Solo estoy y siento las sombras de aquellos sin sentir miedo y un calor close to the earth. Recuerdo haber ya caminado el fresco campo y el amor a la vida. And I wouldn't save myself from the unknown glow de la muerte Sabiendo que recordarán como recuerdo momentos bellos donde the wind flavored my existence. I feel la salida de morir recordando el ritmo to the healing of esta lengua. Recordando estrellas verdes, la voz tan bella que tenía, como nos visitaba, como nos consentía, siempre contando, ofre, offering consejos, con tanto cariño, love. Refrescando la memoria por ti. Here's another poem. I see, there are more people here. Again, the Zoom world, it's, you know, it's complicated. Here we go. Refrescando la memoria por ti. How do you say lingering in español, una palabra super usada en inglés para descubrir y describir este olfato a ti, mejor plasmado, persistente, la banda escondida en pillows, cobijas y días perros perdidos con los mismos cables cruzados de lamentos? And I hope, because what else is there to do? I hope, because I am alive. I hope because I remember with my body. I hope to never die alone, to never become a carcass reaching out from a history book. I hope my voice is prayer amid these crossed wires, these same regrets, these same streets, these same dreams lost to days and blankets and pillows hiding in lo persistente, in lo mejor plasmado, in lo que descubrí, in memorias de ti. All right, I'm going to take a little sip and keep going. Hopefully somebody interrupts me and tells me, here's a, a poem. And this is a very uh, kind of recent poem about being in the Facebook world and the cyber world. Uh, and I'm inspired by, by Murguia with this poem. So uh, hopefully, here we go. It is a crazy time to be online. It is a crazy time to be on Facebook with strangers, 
where white guilt is present and protected by black and brown tokens, where politeness comes in racist nice, racist pink, racist freebies, well-crafted condescending messages, texts and phrases and jokes. Beware of Karen, she will flaunt at you her degree. Beware of Becky, she will not understand how she's considered white. Beware of Sandy, she'll never let go of her good intentions because it's a crazy time to be online where Bob, John, and Smith can put anything together and find ways to antagonize you with a bouquet of gifs, stickers, and wannabe kindness and wannabe innocence. Beware of it all where you're in the cyber world because it's a crazy time to be online. Así que trucha con los posts, they're getting screenshot. Trucha con las pics, they're getting photoshopped because it's a crazy time to be online, uh, to tag on a hashtag. Hashtag pretending, hashtag whiteness, hashtag consuming black and brown art, hashtag consuming the silence for your fragile consideration because it's a crazy time to be online, to be counted and not counted. So beware, 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 lions, tigers, and bears because nobody cares about the physical you in the real world. Online, but a number. Online, a pretty face. Online proof they're not racist. Online, black and brown pictures like candy. And I think this is it. <laughs> so thank you. And I'm gonna hand it over to Leticia. Thanks. Hello, people. Greetings. Buenas tardes, creo. Uh, what, for folks who don't catch on, we're doing a couple rounds, so but Jose wanted to mess with it a little bit because it's a crazy time. <laughs> all right. And then of course I'm talking mess and where are all my poems? Are my poems ready? Just kidding. Well, let me, let me start with just thanking everyone for being here. Thank you to the library. Thank you for beginning um, our time together with those acknowledgements. It was very important acknowledgement. Baras <laughs> Poetry is prayer, poetry is ritual, poetry is sacred, poetry is necessary. So I wanted to start by invoking El Legua to open the roads for us, to open these, these to clear these obstacles for us, especially in the next couple of weeks. Berenera, Bougainvillea purple paper flower. In my room runs a sorrowful creek. They buried its currents with a pistol, conversion chants, stacked sand and brick over a false blank. Ramatush Oloni, nation named twin skin to language. The words fell out of their mouths and no one picked them up. Their syllables graft on my bones, a gravity only I can decipher. Splinters on my body like silver milagros, one for each village. My torso wrinkled bark carved into over time by all the stories carried here, released into the purple paper lashes, helping me sleep when all I want is to bloom and chant. I listen through my petals, hungry for the songs. My hands, the sepal that protects them. My heart, the pulsing alleyway where the animas commune. They are inflorescence. Callejón Bami, where I bear the memory of the mothers holding portraits of their missing children, the pilgrimage of candles for the brown virgen bishop. Callejón que me canta, canta me callejón. Callejón que me canta, canta me callejón. Cantantes en la esquina cantan canciones que contienen pedazos de mi nombre. Cantantes en la esquina cantan canciones que contienen pedazos de mi nombre. Callejón que me canta, cántame, Callejón. Bravo. 
So almost five, gracias. For, for almost 500 years ago, the Tlaquilos, the Nahua scribes, chose history and legacy over their own personal desires, their families finishing or working on the Florentine Codex during a pandemic. Tlaquilos, quote, if before the plague, their goal was to create a historical record, it's now become a race against time and disease. The pandemic is claiming lives outside of their walls, end quote. The offensive on the carcass of St. Luke's has ceased, buckling under the force of nature's payback. The wrecking of a condemned hospital that birthed and ushered so many souls, non-essential. The metal raptor doesn't pause for long. A scribe recounts to the sound of demolition. The chant of metal dragging transmits through the screen window as the writing remembers what the streets used to look like. Sketch the neighbors who populated them. A few weeks of silence as everyone distances from the pestilence, forcing the artists trying to recreate the neighborhood indoors, like the Tlaquilos inking the codex. As the sound of steel rakes the concrete, the unsettling base of the day, a sweet bird returns to the window with notes that rub a suit-covered heart clean. Red-throated bullfinch suggests it should have been him instead of the canary. Quote, the last two books were created during a smallpox pandemic as the contagion took its toll and supply lines for pigments fray, color disappears from the illustrations partway through book 11. By book 12, it's as if all life has been drained out of it." End quote. Shikiye wa sochi, shikiye wampa no yolo, wampa ni mi la sotla, wampa ni mi la sotla, inka no chino yolo. Gracias, te lo paso Alejandro. Well, bravo. Leticia, uh, very beautiful. And I'm really glad that you were able to tap into the Florentine Codex, right? One of the great documents uh, put together during that uh, turbulent, another turbulent uh, period in the history of indigenous people. And so I also want to thank Jose for sharing his uh, work, reflective of our own spirituality that often crosses borders and uh, religions even. And of course, I want to thank the people at the San Francisco Public Library, one of the great libraries of uh, the United States. And it has been acknowledged as one of the great libraries of the United States. And I also very much appreciate, <clears throat> and it might be the only place in our country uh, where the indigenous people are acknowledged as being the stewards of the land. And by extension, I want to say that not only solidarity with the indigenous people of uh, California, of North America, of Canada, of Central America, but I think it's also important that we offer solidarity to all indigenous people that have been displaced throughout the world. And I have in mind right now, for example, the uh, Aborigine com community of Australia that has also been brutalized and displaced as well as the indigenous Palestinian community of Palestine that also suffers displacement and exile in its own land. So just like the internet companies can reach around the world to offer their message, I think it's important for poets also to reach around the world and offer our message and our solidarity. So now that I've gotten that off my chest, <laughs> I'd like to read uh, a few poems that are perhaps pertinent to this time. And perhaps you will know uh, what I'm talking about. I read this poem one time before at the January inauguration of the current uh, illegitimate, illegal and immoral administration. And uh, when I read it at the public library that time for Litquake, afterwards, the poem spontaneously burst into fire. And I thought that was great because I would get the message quicker to those who need it. You will know the devil when you meet him. When the devil comes, 
he won't be sporting a pointy beard or pitchfork or fancy suit. Hell no. He will appear in a fancy suit and lathered in expensive cologne, the high to stink of sulfur. And he will live in a high tower where he will surround himself with gold, which at night he will turn into dog shit. You will never see him at church or place of worship, a shrine, an altar, because his orange hair would catch fire, revealing his horns. He will never show his birth certificate because they don't hand those out in the ninth level of hell. But you will know him by his destruction of God's creation. He will pollute the air and poison the water, annihilate bees and butterflies, unleash tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, epidemics, and call it a hoax. And his followers, to prove their loyalty, must first lick his arsehole and eat maggots in his presence. Remember this when the devil comes to steal your country, if you still have a country. And to rip a little bit on Leticia's observations that poetry is also ritual and, and magic and healing and poetry is also prophecy. Poets prophesize a better world. So here's something recently, 19 lines under quarantine. 3,000 3, times smaller than the thickness of a human hair. So tiny, yet so deadly. Can be seen, but not understood. A crown of spikes tearing through lungs, hard senses. Sometimes asymptomatic. Sick, but not showing it. Is it really a threat or a mirage of our collective insecurity? Chaos, confusion, misinformation, misdirection, invented in a Chinese laboratory to destroy the West, created by Bill Gates to rule over us. The bland deletion of scientific insight, the economy of ignorance must open now. Deliverance from the unknown cannot wait for facts. The exalted leader shepherds the masses to television insanity. Maybe hydrochloroquine <laughs> can cure ignorance, but it's doubtful. Facing the infinite darkness, poets unleash hope. Empathy plus science, science plus empathy. Like my abuelita would say, there's no bad thing from which something good does not come. So uh, we also want to leave uh, a few minutes at the end of our reading to allow some of our participants that are uh, zooming in, giving them a chance to also offer some observations, uh, comments, questions, and perhaps they might have some answers. Uh, I'll read perhaps a couple more poems. Uh, here's one, kind of captured my mood a while ago. <clears throat> Bad luck coming. Cat caught a hummingbird today. 59 missiles are fired at Syria. Homeless camps crowding the underpass. Poisoned food is the main staple at the local corporate market. And a fire broke out in a rundown apartment building. A 20 car pileup on the freeway caused 13 deaths. An angry employee at the local minimum wage job shot the owner and stabbed two others before taking his own life. 
a tornado struck Kansas and wiped out the trailer park. Home team lost 23 times in a row. Stock market crashed and gold became worthless. Luck so bad, fortune cookies went out of business. Knock on wood three times. Repeat three times. Burn incense, sage, copal, mirror to your favorite saint or goddess, deity, plant, or animal. Then book the next boat out the harbor. And before I over to uh, one more poem for Jose and one more for Leticia, I want to make a comment about something regarding poetry. I'm going to paraphrase the great European, Uruguayan writer Eduardo Galeano, who points out that <clears throat> to think that society can be changed by poetry or a poem is absurd. But to believe that society can be changed without poetry and poets is equally absurd. And the point being, I think, that regardless of what society poets live in, socialist, communist, capitalist, neoliberal, quasi, quasi, whatever. Poets always find themselves being critical of their society because it's an obvious truth that any system created by human beings is gonna be flawed because human beings are flawed. And the reason poets are often attacked, persecuted, tortured and assassinated and exiled and jailed is because they point out the contradictions in the society that they are living in. And perhaps nobody taught us that lesson better than the great Salvadorian poet, Roque Dalton. And this is 13 lines for, Lo for Roque, 13 lines for Roque Dalton in memoriam. Because no one could write a poem so full of love and anger, because he made fun of his own Communist Party Central Committee because humor has a place in the resistance. Because to think of revolution sin una buena carcajada or poetry is absurd because poetry is revolutionary. Because Roque is a true revolutionary. Because at the risk of sounding ridiculous, Roque was motivated by great feelings of love. Because love and struggle are twins joined together by the blood of poetry. Because the rich and the ultra leftist accused him of being a poet because Roque was a poet, because he was un guanaco hijo de la gran puta, because he loved El Salvador more than El Salvador loved itself, because he was Roque Dalton, and there will never be another poet like him. So Jose, take another at bat. Thank you, thank you, Alejandro. Estás pesado, you know, como dicen acá in, in the borderlands. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and read uh, two short poems and then move on. This is uh, called Medio, uh, uh, and it goes like this. Long before I knew about prayer and about death, I did not know that every day I would slide easily between two worlds, two different cities, two countries. Growing up, I wanted to be part of one more than the other and didn't understand that on my forehead, I had the eagle perched over the green succulent and in my voice, a pinch of blue white stars. I cried learning how to move my tongue and not being able to say that it hurts to swallow the many versions of my name, my past and family, 
No one wanted to understand. Racism is a little knife in this city that stabs you with a grin that denies explanation. It doesn't matter where you go or how good you pronounce words that erase other words. Because I am half of what I could be, half divided with the face of that apparently begs all the where are you really from questions with a face of movement of this body, of this border, an eye here, an eye to the sky. And I'll end with this, uh, it's called Hydra. Traditional sink or swim values have attached the idea of secrecy to keep quiet the masculine mask leakage of whiteness that possess books of rare tales of mistakes, stolen clay experiences, mimic a mirror's passive outposts to come back to rewritten narratives drenched in savory lies manufactured everywhere to keep black and brown, black and brown hands and brown hands and black and brown hands exploitable and raised somewhere by technique to hide this complicated octopus hydra, a march of mental gymnasts and pink hats defined by government deregulation, strategies by the Lord, higher discipline, hetero pressures, cages, somewhere made powerless, endless tweets and posts, what is it there to highlight in this light, this crisis, this undisputed reality of human dispossession by gas, plastic, hatred, professional bullies? And I pass it on to Leticia. Thank you. Bravo. Nicely done. Gracias. So I'm working on a book of poetry about the mission and about, um, well, about the mission. And uh, I, um, it's entitled right now, Vecina, which is female neighbor. And to still have neighbors after multiple decades here is, is sadly a privilege, but also such a gift. And I've been spending a lot of time with my vecinas lately, going for walks, surviving this pandemic. So I'm gonna read a couple poems with them in mind. Girls in the Air. A girl propelled from a trampoline of sisters climbed the redwood, built a new version of castle out of wet sand. Her love secured ladrillo, planted family, adorned it with party favors reminiscent of the old neighborhood. A girl insisting on heels even at the park pulled me from the cliff, stashed our confessions between glitter and leopard print. She lived on a crooked hill, sent papel picado paper planes when we shared a street sign until the deal and a million. A girl who talks in exclamation points feeds me revolution, opened her floating home, her lightning packed up from the block to across the red bridge. A girl named for solace who catches all of our children like bouquets, our skin of the same chain mail, DNA count containing no resignation. A girl who arrives with wagons and pinky swears, who answered phone calls at dawn, waves colorful pañuelos to usher in the light. These girls, their braids, the net under my fall, hand me peace when it's safe to return. Y'all hear me okay? Yes? Yes, yes. Just checking in. That was dedicated. I want to just shout out the girlfriends that was written for Maribel, Anivet, Larissa, Cello, Vanessa. This is for my neighbor, Mary, seashelling. The wind howls out from the seashells adorning my lobes. A bottle holding harmonies floats onto the shore across the border amidst the canto of Olas Tijuanenses delivering my neighbor's message. Across hundreds of miles, the call rings into the shell of my ear, auxilio. They have come to mark my door with the slate blue stain of dislocation. With the force of a wave's underbelly, the neighbor's long legs propel her down the slight incline of our block after the intruder. The wind of her robe wrapping around her as she confronts the man holding papers of malicious ink. Accomplice erasers promise to disappear the residence, catapult her boy from his bunk so the owner can fill his property with blanks of families gone. A hired hand in the form of a man's silhouette holding an envelope 
has come to write her out of her home. A stranger's power to rip the stitches from all the cuts we diligently cover every day, cowering from the owners. From my seaside retreat, this call for help heaves me into the deep to extend tentacle, scribe tinta on the ocean's back and transmit the sonar of my resistance. I will call you back, Vecina, and we will write the deeds. We will command the riptides and float. Oh. Oh, yeah. And so I will close with this poem. Um, I've been an auditory as well as an actual witness to the demolition of St. Luke's Hospital. It took a really long time. This is shelling. Bop, 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 bop. Two blocks away and how many countries and residents. Bop, 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 bop. The sound of war is a Morse code constant in my ear. Bop, bop, bop. War by military or occupation, the equation is decimation of home pillows on the sidewalk. They are taking apart the hospital by ametralladora, jackhammer, same difference. Ba, 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 the sound of it, automatic. Un disparo tras otro disparo. Shells in a pile, a nut in your teeth, assuming. Calavera, the edificio, no glass or picture, just the yawning window frame, empty. The morning surrounded by an offensive silver jaws on the foundation where my first Latina doctor, where my cousin had his baby. They are taking apart the hospital by ametralladora, jackhammer, same difference. Ba, 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 ba. The sound of it, automatic, un disparo tras otro disparo. The day punctured by a magazine loaded, no need for reading. Headlines repeat, evicted, Ellis Act, developed, displaced. The hard protective outer layers are thinning and everyone keeps leaving. They are taking apart the hospital by ametralladora, jackhammer, same difference. Ba, 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 Bravo. Well, bravo to uh, Jose and Leticia for some beautiful and powerful and inspiring poetry. Uh, like I had mentioned earlier, we do want to give a, uh, some time to some of the audience to uh, chime in. And so I'll close with uh, two poems. And uh, although Jose and Leticia started their set by singing, uh, and I'm very much influenced by music, I'll save my singing for a CD I hope to record in the near future. <laughs> but here's a project I'm working on with my, with my friend, the great artist, Sal uh, Garcia, who was uh, at Galeria and part of the inspiration of starting the Day of the Dead. And uh, we're working on a book called um, The Latin Jazz Suite. And this is one of the poems in that Latin Jazz Suite. <clears throat> Miles Davis in Aranjuez. Time ago, a black cat stalked the streets of Aranjuez, a silver trumpet in one hand, a sorcerer's mouthpiece in the other, and he blew a long, breathy note, and it was a bomb. And so birthed a cool duende, part man, part legend, stitched together with a high note only a magic horn can hit. Later, when we come upon the trail, the signs are still clear, hanging in the steamy air, on dark street corners, inside smoky bars and cabarets, strung between blue notes and red sunsets, a tune, a melody we experienced once, a time just at dusk when workers returned from the fields, dusted with sweat, and the fleeing birds are silhouetted black against the orange sky. And finally, uh, to also a riff on Leticia's poem about our changing neighborhood, I'll leave you with this uh, poem that was inspired in one afternoon <clears throat> when I was driving to an event in North Beach and I'm driving from the south side of the city, right? going through the mission, the south of the market, and, and all the streets in that part of the city are filled with potholes. I mean, worse than Tegucigalpa, right? But once you cross the other side of market, 
all the streets nicely paved all the way to Knob Hill. And it was then that I realized that I was living in Silicon City. Well, they evicted Mia from her storefront on Valencia. Then they burned down the apartment on 22nd Street. The good die young, and isn't it a pity? But the beat goes on in Silicon City. You're a stranger now in your hometown with strange faces on once familiar streets and strange shadows at four o'clock and cops, strangers on a strange beat. And the days and nights are mostly gritty, but hey, it's okay. You're hanging in Silicon City. So I've been told that everything that rises must fall and that the wicked shall be denied. But nowadays, you don't know who to trust. And watch out, you don't get run over by a Google bus. It bees that way, all down and dirty, in the heartless heart of Silicon City. Now, everybody knows the center cannot hold, but prophecy is cheap and politicians are sneaky. So baby, get your high heel sneakers and your black beret on because tonight we fight the power in Silicon City. All right, well, we wanna thank all our virtual audience zooming in from all over the world because we're internationalists and we live in a global village so we want to again thank the library anisa who's been our techie alejandro gallegos my tocayo who helped organize this reading jose my colleague and leticia another great colleague i've worked with them forever and all of you for joining in. We now open it up to you. Offer us questions, comments, observations, and perhaps a few answers to what's going on. We have a question in the chat. Go for it, Leticia. As Latinx people of Califas and or however you may identify, how do you view your poetry within the larger poetry world? Mm. Large poetry world. Which well, one is I mean, that? <laughs> Jose, you want to take a stab at it first? You're muted. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so, how do you? I mean, I think I think we, you have to be aware that you're in a con, like a continuum to answer that question. That the work that we do is not just an, it's not just our work. That it's in the, it's connected to other poets um, and other movements. So, um, you know, I think when it comes to being connected to the larger world, the poetry world, I think we, I don't know, I think there's a lot of assumptions about poets thinking that you can just write out of nowhere. But sometimes, unfortunately, it doesn't carry over like the page. Sometimes I like to play on the page, for example. And sometimes that doesn't carry over uh, on Zoom, uh, but it also has to do with craft. Sometimes it has to do with how other people break the craft or, or push boundaries. I don't know if I'm following the question. Maybe Leticia can help me out here. <laughs> sure. Um, I think whatever you want to share with people is good, Jose, so don't trip. Um, I think for me personally, as a very, very close first generation person in my family, because most of my family was in El Salvador growing up. I, I have a, a lot of really strong ties to El Salvador and I actually published and perform my work in El Salvador. So I definitely feel tied to um, a larger continuum of, of circles of poets. Um, but I do think that 
I count myself very lucky and absolutely the poet child of the movement that Alejandro and many others began here in the mission and in San Francisco. And I have so many incredible multicultural, you know, um, elders and veteranos who have guided me and held me up, Alejandro being one and Devora Major and Jenny Lim and um, I mean, so many, Janice Mercatani and so many to mention, right? Um, Nancy Hom. And so I think uh, first and foremost, I, I see myself as connected to this, this larger movement that's been happening and that this is a really important geographic place for that. I also am glad to be connected to El Salvador and to what people, are, poets are doing in my parents' country and to also you know, cultivate community across the country through national gatherings like Split This Rock and whatnot. So I think community is everything. And so. And let me add a little bit to that. I'm not sure we're answering uh, the question, but I think there's a myth involved that the poet and the writer and the artist is isolated in the little cubby hole and create all by themselves. But I don't agree with that. I think it's super important, especially for emerging young poets, developing poets, that they create a sense of community by uh, touching base with other poets, going to poetry readings, a poet is visiting, go hear her, etc., so that you get a sense that no, you're not isolated. We don't want to be isolated. We want to be part of our community in many different levels. And then another thing that I think is super important, and I'll use the thesis example of reading from the Florentine Codex, and, and it's a truism that all writing is informed by what the poet, the author has previously read. So super important also to break that isolation is that the emerging poets, writers read widely from many different sources, including all the great writers from our community, both in the United States and throughout Latin America and other cultures, African, Japanese, uh, European, so that our writers are richly, richly endowed with all the great literature of the world. And notice it's a great advantage being bilingual because for example, myself who has a, a BA in English literature, I can talk to you about all the English poets from Blake to T.S. Eliot. But I can also talk to you about all the Latino poets from Sor Juana Inés, right, to Javier Zamora. And that allows you, Federico Garcia Lorca, everybody in between, right, it gives me much wider range to tap into uh, from this, these different sources and images and inspirations. So I think it's a big advantage of it for us to learn all the different cultures, because whereas I might know English literature, the typical North American poet that writes only in English cannot enter or has entered Latin American poetry. So that to me, they're way, way beyond. And there's uh, Javier Samora, one of the many new great writers uh, posted by Anis uh, to, to look for. Definitely so what are you going to look at new writers? Go ahead, Francisco. No, I was just going to say one of the perks of Zoom, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Uh, is that these amazing links to the library's resources around some of the things we're mentioning. So that's that's really cool. I just, I'll chime in really quick. There's, I put a link to a document that'll have all of those links for you too. So you can gather those later. You don't have to grab them all right now. And there are a couple other comments in the chat. Go ahead. Uh, Arnoldo, hola Arnoldo, que tal? All poetry is large. Not all poetry has power. Not all poetry has community. Latinx, Chicana, Indigenous, Salvadoran, Black, Brown, Third World poetry is the majority poetry. Es soepa. Multilingual, multiracial, multinational, multispiritual, multimatter. It's like a poem in and of itself, right? Yeah. And, and uh, let me add that I totally agree with that. And then I'll mention again that the author, the writer, the poet, needs to know all the different literatures that are going on. But one of my critiques of say typical North American writers, both novelists and poets, 
They tend to focus just on themselves and their own personal woes. And very seldom is it a poem about what's going on in the exterior world, in the world around them, right? So I find that to be a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting a robocall right now, excuse me, from, from Russia. They want to know if, if I have found that, that laptop that had <laughs> Hillary's emails, Barack Obama's sex life, and Joe Biden's corruption. But I'm going to pass on the call from the Ukraine or wherever we came from. You know, something related to that, I wanted to mention uh, the other day in my U.S. Central American History Heritage class, I had a guest, an incredible poet and, um, you know, freedom fighter, Rosana Perez, who lives in Los Angeles and came in the 1980s as a refugee um, from the Civil War in El Salvador. And I mean, everything she said was so powerful, but it's something in particular that struck me was that back then, during the Civil War, when the U.S. was funding that, that Civil War, uh, she said there was a politician who would refer to Salvadorans as criminals. And I was like, wait, wait, that's like a, that's like again? a legacy? Like, no, before, not again, before, okay? And she said, you know, there were so few of us here during that time. I mean, my family was kind of an anomaly coming in 71, but uh, she said they didn't know us. They didn't know us. And so we needed to write for them to know us. And so, charge I feel is to write so they can get to know us but also knowing other people and seeing other people like you were saying Alejandro and with that said I'm gonna do something I usually don't do which is a shameless plug because this book right here the wanderings oh you can't see it because of my background whoa, whoa, whoa. there it is the wandering song a, a collection of writing by U.S. Central Americans uh, it sold out. It's published by Tia Chucha Press and they are reprinting it and it's coming back out in November. So so yeah. not, not even close criminals or any of the other things that you hear that will, you can read all of the beauty in this book. Vaya. He dicho. Bien dicho. And congratulations on that, Leticia. And, Thank you. And, and let me just add something also that I learned from uh, the great poet Ernesto Cardenal from Nicaragua who passed away recently. He also pointed out that, that one of the powers of poetry is to ridiculize the powerful, to, to explain how phony they are, right? How ridiculous they are in their positions. And so I think po uh, poetry also cuts as satire, uh, as well as upfront critiques. So I think poetry has uh, a lot of uh, uh, possibilities for us, but I would also encourage all the emerging poets out there in the audience to do like what Leticia does, be able to memorize your own poems, right? At least two or three, because poetry is an oral art, yes? And throughout Latin America, it's always traditionally uh, recitado recited from memory. So it's also, I think, a task of uh, ourselves that we practice poetry as an oral uh, tradition. So a challenge for uh, all of us out there. Yeah? Other comments, perceptions, Jose? I was just gonna, I was just gonna add that, I mean, poetry is an art uh, that brings refuge to people. So I think sometimes it's, it's the resistance. I think we're so caught up in a world where we feel resistance is, is gonna be materialized or that we don't validate our own, our own way to resist. And I think poetry is a way to do that, you know, to say, I'm here, I'm producing, I'm, I'm existing. And to become more aware of that uh, because the world is telling everything, you know, it's telling us not to, not to uh, think that we can resist. So I think for me, art making is, is um, is that as a collage artist, you know, I, I don't think that I'm resisting or I don't think that I'm surviving, but it is the art and the poetry that comes that is a testament to that. So I think I want to just kind of let everybody know that if you're producing art, that means you're surviving, that you're pushing up against 
everything out there that's trying to crush us and, and you know kill our spirits absolutely yes so another question on the roll there uh, leticia you're handling the question that asked <laughs> I made myself moderator. Doesn't look like it, just a lot of thank yous. There is a question about, probably more for the SFPL folks about work, writing workshops coming up, if y'all are doing any of that. Alejandro? We've, we've done like some NaNoWriMo, we've done other writing workshops. I don't think we have anything currently planned as a writing workshop. And I don't know, I'd ask Anissa if we've actually even done any writing workshops during the Zoom era. Might be difficult. Um, it's coming. It's coming. I promise. Okay. It's just Alejandro. Are. It's just Alejandro and I. We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> and, and and it's part part of the difficulty we're having right now with uh, so many bookstores closed. We had a great uh, poetry series started by, in part by Jose and uh, Marguerite Munoz at uh, Alley Cat. Beautiful, beautiful series that went on for years and years and years. And of course, now that Alley Cat is not open, so we lose those venues. So we have to invent new ways, right? To reach out to our community and to keep poetry alive, which I know we will, right? But also to encourage our, especially our young people, I think, to read uh, poetry, to write their own thoughts down, right? It's so important, I think, several of the poets mentioned today, important because then we get to define who we are as opposed to someone else defining us. So super important then, that we participate in all the arts, I think, right? Dance, theater, uh, music, uh, poetry, writing, novels, everything. And, and we be involved to let people know that, yeah, we are here. We do have a voice. We are humans and we have desires and aspirations and uh, all the things that make anyone human uh, on the planet. So thank you all again. Uh, for your participation and, and your patience and joining us on Zoom on a Friday afternoon uh, on a beautiful uh, autumn day when uh, we could all be on Facebook listening to bad news. And this, can you repeat the, the, you said there was a link where all the links are gonna be? Did you say that? Sure, let me put that in there again. And I just wanted to give a plug for next week's poetry since you're all here, I love that this many people turned out for poetry. Gosh, thank you, that's amazing. But next week we have Philippinex poetry and that's gonna be on Wednesday night, 6 to 7.15 featuring Barbara Jane Reyes and her new book, <coughs> Rachel Cruz, Jan Hunt Henry Gray and Aldrin Valderez. So please come back for that. And here comes that link again. And I did stick a ton of links as you were all talking in here. So all of this is available. And I also send a follow-up email so you'll get that link again. And this is on YouTube, so you can find it there as well. Can I just say real quick before I give it back to the, to the poets for their last words and for them to close it out that I think what Alejandro said and kind of a theme for the other two and what we try to do with the library, you all put it very succinctly and well, you're poets, right? Building community. I think what we're trying to do here at the library is have programs, not just to have programs, not just to have an author, not just to have a poet, but we want to create shared experiences, to build communities, to be mindful of who we're having and who we want, like who maybe needs to feel connections with other people and who we want to feel connected to the library and our institution and who we think should be connected with each other. So I think what you were, all of you were just talking about community and what that means um, and the poetry community and, and where we all fit in, I think is incredible. Thank you. I'll turn it over to you all for your last, uh, um, your words. Thank you so much. It's one o'clock. Jose? I just want to thank everybody, the San Francisco Public Library, Anissa, Alejandro, uh, Alejandro as well, <laughs> Leticia and everybody who's here. Um, yeah, it's building community and also the community will will thrive beyond what you can do. That's how I feel. I left San Francisco years ago and Voz in Tinta is still going on in the cyber world. So if, if you if you can check it out, if you can go to those readings and there's a, a lot of a hell of a lot of other uh, 
readings going on online. Um, you know, uh, so check those out and, and hear poetry. And poetry is like, uh, um, I don't know, it's just fuel, vitamina as they call it. So that's yeah, vitamina, yeah. I also want to say thank you and a little shout out to folks who were listening on uh, YouTube. I saw uh, Michael War out there and other friendly comments. It's an old student of yours, Alejandro, saying that they haven't seen you in like 20 years. So the, the multiple platforms is cool, right? Yeah. Thank you so much again to Alejandro Anessa and to Alejandro Murguia, El Mero Mero. And, and, and just, thanks to all of you for coming and for staying. And, and just to repeat the thanks to Denise and Alejandro at the library and the library staff in general, and like I said, probably the great library system of the United States here in San Francisco. We should appreciate it and take advantage of it. And final message, keep reading everyone, right? Keep writing and reading and writing is resistance and it also gives us life and hope. So thank you very much for joining us on this virtual Zoom. And hopefully we'll see you again, either in person or in Zoom or on 24th Street. Hi, <laughs> <laughs>